بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على أشرف الأنبياء وسيد المرسلين نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين اللهم علمنا ما ينفعنا وانفعنا بما علمتنا وجدنا علما وعملا وهدى وتقا ورشادا برحمتك يا أرحم الراحمين اللهم فقهنا في الدين وعلمنا التأويل ربنا زدنا علما اللهم إنا نعوذ بك من علم لا ينفع ومن قلب لا يخشع ومن نفس لا تشبع ومن دعوة لا يستجاب لها نعوذ بك اللهم من هؤلاء الأربع أما بعد ف... This is the eighth of the دروس and explanation of علام السنة المنشورة uh, The book which has been authored by Sheikh Hafiz al-Hakami طيب uh, We'll take a quick review of the previous درس إن شاء الله I'll ask a few questions إن شاء الله expecting some answers from the uh, um, we discussed that there are two pillars uh, from the five pillars of Islam, which if left out, يعني, regardless of why they were left out, whether out of يعني, uh, ignorance or no, whether out of uh, a procrastination or whether out of um, يعني, arrogance, they amount to kufr akbar, major kufr. What are those, those two pillars? Shahada plus Salah, طيب. Sister says Shahada and Salah, طيب. ممتاز. Um, <coughs> Salah and Shahadatain, ممتاز. ممتاز جدا. Shahadatain and a Salah, يعني either of the two Shahadas and a Salah, طيب. The rest of the five pillars, يعني the three pillars, which are Zakah, Salm, and Hajj, if someone leaves them out uh, due to, let's say, laziness or because he was stingy with his uh, yani, wealth. So he didn't want to spend it in the way of Allah. He didn't want to spend on Hajj, or he didn't want to spend on Zakah. Such a person, does this act of his amount to Kufr? Sinful, not Kufr, major sin. Mumtaz, Jiddan. And when is it? when does it amount to Kufr? If left out of arrogance. If it is left out of arrogance, يعني, uh, and can someone quote the Dalil from uh, the Quran that if something, if, if any part of Sharia is left out of arrogance, that amounts to Kufr Akbar? There is this uh, ayah that talks about Shaitan not complying to the command of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with the command of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to do sujood to Adam alayhi salam. What did Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala say about him? Aba was takbara. Wa kana min al-kafirin. Mumtaz jiddan Allah barik fiq. Aba was takbara wa kana min al-kafirin. Arafna min hadha. From this we know that a person who leaves something out of uh, uh, arrogance he, uh, his act, this act of his amounts to kufr. Mumtaz jiddan. Barakallahu feekum jami'an. Wallahi, it's very uh, nice to hear responses from everyone. Taib. Uh, okay, uh, important question. What is the, yani, uh, yani if iman is, yani, used separately without the mention of Islam, and it is used against kufr, then this iman is inclusive of uh, what things? Is it just the beliefs in the heart, or is it yani, something else as well? Islam. It's only Islam, yani, if it does not. If... This answer is incomplete. Uh, one of the sisters says Islam, but not just Islam. We are Islam and Iman. Okay, be more specific in your definition of Iman or in your Yani answer to the reality of Iman. What, 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 what are the uh, words that the Salaf used uh, for this, for Iman? What did they say? They used two words. And then there was a sub-classification or sub-categorization of those two uh, categories. Naam, ya khwan. What are the... Two words that the amal wa qawl. Taib, qawlun wa amal. Muntaz, qawlun wa amal. Taib. And then qawl and amal both were uh, further categorized into two each. 
So قول uh, was uh, يعني included uh, what two categories? القلب واللسان. قول القلب وقول اللسان. It was inclusive of قول القلب and قول اللسان. أخي محمد فايز. Uh, can you no. give me an example of قول القلب? قول القلب يعني uh, uh, يعني uh, كما يعني غجاء وخوف. هذا عمل القلب وليس قول القلب. This is not قول القلب. What does قول القلب refer to? When the salaf say قول قول القلب refers to the beliefs. الاعتقاد. قول القلب هو الاعتقاد. All of the beliefs. Allah سبحانه وتعالى وحده He is the هو الخالق المالك المدبر الرازق إلى آخر ذلك. وأنه هو المستحق وحده للعبادة. وأنه يعني له صفات لا مثيل له فيها إلى آخر ذلك. كل الاعتقادات تأتي أو تندرج تحت قول القلب. All of the beliefs they come under the category which is قول القلب. طيب. What is قول اللسان? What does قول اللسان refer to? Uh, saying the the shahada. Saying the shahada, or يعني as some scholars have been more generic about it, or يعني يعني even the amal which are done by the tongue, يعني the dhikr and other good deeds that are done by the tongue, they would come into the qawl al-lisan. Else, كما قال الأخ طلحة, like طلحة says, the uttering utterance of the shahadatain. And then if, 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 if we say that قول اللسان is only the utterance of the shahadatain, then where would zikr go? Where would the other good deeds that are done with your tongue, where would they be uh, يعني, uh, put? In which category? Uh, in actions. In actions, Ahsan. If, if we say قول اللسان only means shahadatain, or يعني, to utter the shahadatain, then other good deeds that are done by the, the tongue, they will go into or they'll be included in Amalul uh, Jawarih. Amalul Jawarih, the actions that are done by the body parts, by the lips. Type. Amalul uh, Qalb, give me examples of Amalul Qalb. Fear of Allah, love for Allah. Mumtaz, tawakkul, hope, to rely upon Allah, fear of Allah. Mumtaz, uh, then. Okay, Mumtaz, barakallahu feek. Uh, and this is easy. Examples of amal al-jawarih, amal al-jawarih, the actions of the limbs. Taqwa, sincerity, raja, mumtaz. Qawl al-qalbi wal lisan, mumtaz. Naam, ya akhi talha. Prayer, fasting, hajj. Mumtaz, jiddan. Barakallahu feek. Tayyip. We said, okay, and then there was another, there was a three-prong classification also of the iman. So in, in that three uh, category or uh, classification or three, um, يعني, uh, when, when we classified or we categorized the iman into three, what were, what, what were those three categories? And there is a four-prong and then there's a three-prong uh, categorization of iman. What is that? That's, uh, what are those three types? wa اعتقاد وقول وعمل اعتقاد وقول وعمل ممتاز اعتقاد فلس عمل فلس قول ممتاز طيب uh, okay in the the four type uh, categorization in which we have four categories uh, now which which two will go into one of these they will, they will, we will have to put two of those four categories into one of these three Which ones will we put? And we have قول القلب, and the beliefs. Then we have قول اللسان. Then we have عمل القلب and عمل الجوارح. عمل ممتاز, ممتاز. So عمل يعني عمل القلب والجوارح. Both of these, يعني the actions of the heart. That is خوف, رجاء, hope, توكل, إلى آخر ذلك. The actions of the heart, heart, and the actions of the limbs. Both will go into. يعني العمل طيب ممتاز so يعني it could be categorized into three iman or two with having subcategories طيب so we have two categorizations of iman اعتقاد وقول وعمل or just to say قول وعمل and then under قول we have قول القلب واللسان 
and under amal we have amal al-qalbi wal jabarih is that inshallah clear um tayyib inshallah okay now uh, is iman of any benefit without one of these three without i'tiqad and qawl al-amal without one of the i'tiqad and qawl al-amal is iman of any benefit Ahsanti, it's not it's not of any benefit. Tayyib. Um what is the stance of the Salaf? What is the stance of the the Tabi'een and and Atba' al Tabi'een, the Aimma from that time? All of them, what is their stance in regards to this? Are they any do do they differ with regards to this or are they upon any agreement? Uh, there is Ijma. There is score. an Ijma. There is they 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 unanimously agree. They unanimously agree that uh, the iman is qawlun wa amal and it is not of any benefit without uh, يعني, one of these three, without i'tiqad or qawl amal. So if one of these three is absent, it's missing, then iman is of no benefit. Tayyip. Uh, Talha, can you mention someone very famous who mentioned this ijma'? There was a very famous Imam who had mentioned this Ijma. Yeah, Imam Shafi'i. Imam Al Shafi'i. Al Imam Al Shafi'i, who is the one who mentioned this Ijma. And there are others, but one of the very famous Imam to have mentioned this Ijma is Imam Al Shafi'i. And by the way, for those who don't know, like just like Quran and Sunnah are a dalil, the Ijma, the consensus of the Ummah or of the scholars, is also a dalil. For those who don't know, why are we just يعني, uh, repetitively يعني, mentioning ijma' or why are we uh, يعني, giving ijma' so much importance? Because it is a dalil, just like Quran and Sunnah. Just like Quran and Sunnah is a dalil, likewise ijma' is also a dalil. Why? Because there are texts of, from the Prophet وسلم, that are, the narrations, uh, and then there are also ayat in the Quran which indicate that the, the whole of the ummah can never be upon misguidance all of the ummah at once can never be upon misguidance there must be someone with yani with the truth uh, have, having the truth so if all of the scholars are upon agreement with regards to something then had had that they think or had that opinion or stance been wrong then these and yani th this would not be possible in the light of these nusus and in the light of these texts according to quran and sunnah itself all of the scholars can never agree upon some misguidance, some misguidance. There must be someone upon the truth. So when all of the scholars agree upon something, then that is true without a doubt. That is true without a doubt. And that agreement or that consensus in Arabic or in the yani term, uh, Shari terminology, we, we call it, we call it ijma'. Ijma', ijma means yani, uh, consensus, unanimous agreement. Yani everyone is gathered upon this, uh, this opinion. Mumtaz, tayyib. Barakallahu feekum. These were, يعني, we had to, uh, يعني, uh, take, uh, يعني, uh, we had to uh, يعني, make the review a little longer today because of the importance of these issues. Uh, also, there were two other matters we had discussed with regards to Iman. Not just that it is qawl and amal, not just that it is i'tiqad wa qawl and amal, rather, uh, there were two, uh, two other things we had mentioned about Iman. What are those two things upon which also there is an ijma of the salaf? Upon which there is an ijma of the salaf. Naam, Akhi Mustafa, Fadl Akhi. Tafadl wa illa al izaj wa raaka sayujibu anka. Tayyib, Labas. Tayyib, Labas. Mustafa, and Kanaka Mashul Labas. Tayyib, anyone else? What, are, what other two things that we mentioned about Iman? Uh, one is that it increases and decreases, and the other is increases and decreases. Mumtaz, also the sisters answered the same. They said increases and decreases. Mumtaz, jiddan, Uh What does it increase with? Uh, good deeds. Ahsan. And what does it decrease with? Uh, with sins. Uh... Mumtaz, Mumtaz, Mumtaz. And the last thing was that uh, the people of Iman are upon different levels. So Iman of Jibril alayhi salam is unlike the Iman of any one of us. Likewise, the Iman of Abu Bakr is unlike the Iman of any one of us. Uh, 
ممتاز جدا and why is are these so ma- these matters so important that inshallah we will study later on and right now we just want to any emphasize on or any make sure that we uh, properly learn the aqidah of ahl sunnah wal jamaah once we're done with that then we'll yani come to the aqaid of other sects inshallah uh طيب ممتاز جدا um lastly okay last uh, question inshallah what is yani when we say that iman uh, when oh, sorry two last questions when when we mention iman along with islam what does it refer to iman along with islam if it's mentioned along with islam what does it refer to نعم يا اخوان واخوات inward actions okay inward beliefs mumtaz inner and outer action type inward beliefs that's the when when mentioned alongside islam not without islam some of the sisters said a uh, whole of the deen no a whole of the deen when it's mentioned separately and yani without mention of islam but when it's mentioned alongside islam with islam then islam refers to the outward actions and iman refers to the inward beliefs which is why the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam said al iman yani أن تؤمن بالله وملائكته وكتبه ورسله واليوم الآخر والقدر خيره وشره. He mentioned that iman is to believe in Allah سبحانه وتعالى, His angels, His books, His messengers, the last day, and in the قدر. طيب. What is that? What does it mean to believe in Allah سبحانه وتعالى? It includes four things. What are those four things? What does it mean to believe in Allah سبحانه وتعالى? Believe in the existence of Allah. Mutaz. Believe in His uh, Lordship. Lordship. Tawheed Uluhiyah wa Tawheed Rububiyah wa Tawheed Asma wa Sifat. Taib. Tawheed Rububiyah, which the brother uh, Muhammad Faiz referred to as uh, uh, the Tawheed of Lordship and uh, in His Uluhiyah. Uh, that is His right to be worshipped and Asma wa Sifat. That there, يعني, He has perfect attributes. And perfect names, and there is none like him in his attributes. Mumtaz jiddan akhi Muhammad Faiz. Nabda ul'an bi dars al Let's start today's dars. One of the brothers asked the question, does it decrease if a person does not do good deeds and also does not sin? Allahu a'lam. If he does not do good deeds, then he would be yani, missing out on some of the wajibat. And leaving out the wajibat, they yani, amount to sinning. Yani. So in this case, I cannot think of any scenario if someone does not do good deeds and at the same time does not sin. It could be possible for one, two minutes, one hour maybe, but the whole of the day, one whole day, it's not possible. You, if you're not doing any good deeds, you will be missing out on some salat. And if you miss out on a salat, then this is a major sin. So yes, if uh, uh, Allahu Alam, like if you are sitting idle for one hour, is it going to affect you? Is it going to decrease your iman? Maybe, maybe it depends. I mean, this, I mean, this is a I mean, scenario that is uh, unimaginable. There's always some sort of an influence wherever you are. It might be because you're watching something, you're thinking of something, the shaitan maybe is putting something in your head. So it's very hard to imagine such a scenario. Taib. Bismillah. Taib. Ma huwa tawheed al What is tawheed al We said that to, 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 to believe in Allah means to uh, believe in his existence, in his lordship, that is Rububiyyah, in his Uluhiyyah, and in his Asma and Sifat. So now we must explain, what do we mean by Rububiyyah? Ma huwa Tawheed al-Rububiyyah? Sheikh mentioned a very long answer. We wanted to keep it concise and to the point. Uh, so that's why we yani, tried to yani, just mention the, the, the precise definition of uh, Tawheed uh, al-Rububiyyah. And suffice with it. So we said, "Huwa." This is the definition, taban, from the of the ulama. It's not my own definition, taban. Huwa ifradu Allahi bil khalqi wal mulki wal tadbiri wal razqa. It is to single out Allah Subhanahu wa Taala and believe Him to be the one and only in which matters, in creation, in ownership. In tadbir, yani governance or control or disposal of the universe, uh, and warazqa and sustenance, providing sustenance. And some add giving life and death, 
Some subtract al razq and they only suffice with these three. Some add al hukum like al lajna al daima in the Saudiya, they added al hukum. But this is يعني, generally the definition of tawheed al rububiyah. So you, يعني, memorize one of these definitions, inshallah, you are upon khair. Right? And, and, and the, the, the purpose behind memorizing these definitions is for you, for it to make it easy for you to grasp the, uh, the, the issues, the academic issues. Right? So this is Tawheed al-Rububiyyah, to believe Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to be one and only in creation, in ownership, in, in governance or the disposal of the affairs of the universe or in the control of the universe, وَالرَّزْقِ and in providing sustenance. طيب. I have, uh, first let's read the ayahs. يَقُولُ اللَّهُ عَزَّ وَجَلْ قُلْ مَنْ يَرْزُقُكُمْ مِنَ السَّمَاءِ وَالْأَرْضِ أَمَّنْ يَمْلِكُ السَّمْعَ وَالْأَبْصَارِ In the translation, I, I expect the students to read it by themselves, inshallah. وَمَنْ يُخْرِجُ الْحَيَّ مِنَ الْمَيِّثِ وَيُخْرِجُ الْمَيِّتَ مِنَ الْحَيِّ وَمَنْ يُدَبِّرُ الْأَمْرِ فَسَيَقُولُونَ اللَّهُ فَقُلْ أَفَلَا تَتَّقُونَ This is the style of the Qur'an. The Qur'an mentions the deleels of Tawheed al-Rububiyyah to convince the kuffar to follow Tawheed al-Uluhiyyah. Because if you affirm Tawheed al-Rububiyyah, if you affirm that Allah alone is the creator, the owner, the controller, the provider, the sustainer, the one giver of life and death, then how can you worship someone other than Allah? So this is the style of the Quran. Everywhere in the Quran, yani Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions Tawheed al-Rububiyyah, and then it says, فَقُلْ أَفَلَا تَتَّقُونَ يعني Don't you fear Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? Then don't you, يعني أَفَلَا تَعْقِلُونَ يعني, don't you get this? Don't you understand this? يعني then, and how can you uh, يعني, worship someone besides Allah if you affirm that Allah alone does all of these things? طيب. Now the question is, يعني, we mentioned uh, الخلق, المرك, تدبير, والرزق. طيب. The first part of the ayah, uh, it refers to which of these four? Does it refer to al-khalq or mulk or tadbir or rasq? Which one of these four? Razq. Razq, mumtaz, طيب. Razq, mumtaz, mumtaz, barakallahu feekum jami'an. Amma yamliku sam'a wal absar, what does it refer to? Mulk. Mulk, mumtaz, طيب. وَمَنْ يُخْرِجُ الْحَيَّ مِنَ الْمَيِّتِ وَيُخْرِجُ الْمَيِّتَ مِنَ الْحَيِّ We haven't mentioned in the definition, but just يعني, tell me which, what does it refer to, which has been mentioned by some ulama with regards to rububiyya. It refers to, or we can derive, or we derive from this, the a'tiqad that Allah alone gives life and death. الْإِحْيَا وَالْإِمَاتَ ممتاز. Uh, Like uh, creation, creation uh, إِحْيَا وَالْإِمَاتَ Giving of life and death. Ihya and imata. Let me just write it down for those who want to also note this uh, uh, down that Walama also mentioned al ihya wal imata. Wal ihya wal imata. Taban, uh, you're not supposed to leave a gap between wow and the next word in Arabic. Or this is the Arabic. Uh, rule, but I because I'm writing with a trackpad, it's difficult for me. Right. What do we take from this part? Next from, ayah, from this ayah, we generally take the header. Generally, that all of Tawheedar Tawheed all of it we take from this Allah is the Lord of the heavens and the earth. That, that includes that He is the Creator, the Malik, the Mudabbir, the Raza. Do they not? What part of Tawheed al rububiyyah does this refer to? Yeah. 
This is a little difficult one, little difficult. Does it refer to a khalq or mulk or tadbir or razq or ihya or imata? Which one of the four? Fix. Mulk. Hmm. No, not exactly mulk. Not exactly mulk. I apologize for not being able to mention the references of the ayahs. This is from Surah Ra'd, the second one. And the first one is from Surah Yunus. Now, someone, لا يملكون لأنفسهم نفعا ولا ضرا. What is it? Referring to خلق. التدبير. التدبير. ممتاز. Not خلق. خلق is creation. تدبير. Controlling and bringing about benefit. Bringing about harm. ممتاز. التدبير. قل هل يستوي الأعمى والبصير أم هل تستوي الظلمات والنور؟ يعني is Allah سبحانه وتعالى يعني يعني equal to someone who does he's who's unable to do all of these things just like a a person who sees is not equal to a person who is blind and just like darkness is not equal to light طيب أم جعلوا لله شركاء خلقوا كخلقه فتشابه الخلق عليهم this part of the ayah Yani indicates the exclusivity of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in which of these six things or the rest of the ayah even. Which of the six does it indicate exclusivity of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in? Al-Khalq, Mumtaz, that was an easy one. Al-Khalq, Mumtaz, Taif. So this is where, I mean, this is the Tawheed al as mentioned in the Quran. Um, it, is, it is a time for Isha fair here. So inshallah, we'll continue after Isha. Barakallahu feekum until 9.30 KSA time. Bi'idhni lahi ta'ala. Naqif huna. So we'll stop here for a yani, break, inshallah. And then inshallah, we'll continue after Isha fair. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على سيد الأنبياء وأشرف المرسلين نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين أما بعد طيب يا إخوة ويا أخوات طيب I have a few questions for you regarding the regarding توحيد الربوبية طيب when we say that we we must believe Allah سبحانه وتعالى to be one and only in خلق and ملك and تدبير الرزق طيب but we find in this دنيا people يعني, who can provide something for someone يعني, uh, like people give distribute food uh, people uh, يعني, control some affairs of this dunya people own some things or some يعني, people own things in the dunya and also that people invent and construct or produce things. So how yani, would we, yani, what is then the meaning of Tawheed al And yani, if people besides Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala also yani, produce things and goods and machines and stuff yani, in this dunya and they also own things and they also control and govern some things and they also can provide food and drink and clothes people with their needs. Yani. So what is Tawheed al then about? Or how do we believe that Allah is the one and only? Or what are we exactly talking about then? Their will and authority is under the will and authority of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This is an answer from a sister. Their will and authority is under the will and authority of Allah. Mm. No, uh, yes, it is, but yani, this answer is not yani, up to the mark. Yani. We have discussed this before once. Assalamu alaikum, Sheikh. Is it in reference, and I believe if I remember correctly, how you said there is a king with his kingdom and everyone under him is in his control, so under his authority. So basically everything that a slave owns is still owned by that king. Mumtaz, or a king or the master, I mean, the one who owns the slave, 
everything belongs to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mumtaz yani the ownership of the creation is subjective it's uh, not absolute ownership واضح this is this is mulk they say this is tabi' this uh, is yani uh, subject to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's yani uh, ata and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's um, uh, yani gifting him uh, yani this uh, uh, this this whatever he owns in this world so this, it is subjective it's not absolute the creation of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is first let's talk about the creation creation of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is to bring something out of nothing he brings things into existence out of nothing this is exclusive to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. As for us, we do not create things, we mold things from one to other. And we mold things from, we take, take materials and make things up. Even though we call it creation, uh, yani, or we use the word creation, but it, it is not exactly the creation that, that, that is exclusive to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala because the one that is exclusive to Allah is to bring something out of nothing. As for mulk, then everything, just like the brother uh, Fahmi Nasr said, uh, that it is yani, the mulk of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and he owns the slaves. So whatever the slaves own, Allah owns, owns that. And it has been given to the slaves by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And it has been temporarily given to the slaves by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And the slaves will be returning to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So it is not, it is a subjective ownership. It is not an absolute ownership that is the like which is for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Likewise, the control that is that we have is also yani, subjective. It is not absolute control that the like which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has. So if Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants to uh, yani, uh, conduct some uh, occurrence or some matter in a particular way, and the creation wants to do it in another way, then the will of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will overcome the will of the of the creation. That means that this tadbir that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given the ability of to the sum of the, his creation, it is flawed and defective. It is not absolute and perfect like the one which is for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And that the, the, the perfect tadbir and the absolute tadbir is the one that we talk about when we uh, that we are, is the one that we are that we intend when we are talking about Tawheed al rububiyyah And likewise is razq. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, when he gives, he provides, uh, yani he is the absolute provider of everything. As for us human beings or creation of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, then we are only just sharing what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has provided us with. We are merely sharing what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has provided us with. The absolute sustenance is in the hands of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. هَلْ مِنْ خَالِقٍ غَيْرُ اللَّهِ يَرْزُقُكُمْ مِنَ السَّمَاءِ وَالْأَرْضِ is there any creator who provides you sustenance from the, from the skies and the earth? La ilaha illa hu. There is no one who is worthy of worship except that same creator who provides you from the, from the skies and the, and the earth. So, the, so this is the point. So we are merely sharing. So these are all, yani, uh, at these, these af'al, these actions are attributed to the creation, yani, not in the absolute sense, in a very, yani, uh, specific sense in a very yani, subjective uh, sense Wallahu a'lam طيب ممتاز يا إخوان وأخوات طيب moving on to the next question today we have some really interesting and very uh, some of the topics are يعني, especially with regards to shirk asqa they are يعني, life changing uh, topics and issues so may Allah ease uh, the discussion of those issues طيب. what is the opposite of Tawheed al-Rububiyyah Tawheed al rububiyyah what is the opposite of it? Or how does the Tawheed al rububiyyah become uh, invalid? How is it nullified? Wadih? Yaqulu we, we, uh, yani we mentioned this uh, to summarize the kalam of the Shaykh, or we try to bring uh, yani a concise sentence or some, a precise sentence to uh, define uh, that which is, that which invalidates Tawheed al rububiyyah What is, what are the things that invalidate Tawheed al rububiyyah ضده الشرك في اعتقاد انفراده بالربوبية. يعني opposite to توحيد الربوبية or the thing that invalidates is is to commit shirk in توحيد الربوبية. How do you commit shirk in توحيد الربوبية? 
هو أن ينسب شيئا من معاني الربوبية الخاصة بالله لغيره to attribute the matter some of the matters شيئا not all of the matters even if one matter of توحيد الربوبية one matter that is exclusive to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is attributed to someone other than Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala then this is shirk fi tawheed al rububiyya this is shirk akbar in tawheed al rububiyya wadih this would invalidate the tawheed al rububiyya and of course then it would invalidate your iman and your islam as well it will take you out of the fold of islam if you attribute a single thing that is exclusive to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala you attribute it to someone besides Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala then this will amount to shirk akbar in tawheed al rububiyya so for example and let me give you examples there are people, there are, yani, there is the sect, uh, some of the Sufis, they have gone so far in their uh, deviance that they say that there are yani, mashayikh and they call them abtal and, uh, and aqtab, they call them qutub and uh, uh, batal, yeah? They, they, they have these mashayikh, yani, they, they claim that there are mashayikh who are qutub and abtal and they have been given the control of the universe by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. By Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. They have been given the control of the universe by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This amounts to shirk akbar fi rububiyyah Because by fitrah and by sharia and by all means, by reason, we know that it is only the, the control of the universe, the absolute control of the universe only belongs to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So when they attribute it to those besides Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, they commit shirk akbar in rububiyya. And this is even worse than the people of Mecca, the kuffar of Mecca. The kuffar of Mecca never used to commit shirk in, or they very seldom did they commit shirk in uh, tawheed al-rububiyya. Mainly or principally their shirk was in tawheed al-uluhiyya. They used to affirm that Allah alone is the control of the universe. They never, or uh, يعني, most of them n never believed that, that the beings that these idols represent uh, they never believe that they control the universe. They even believe that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala owns, the, own, own, owns these beings, which is why they used to say in their, in their hajj, لَبَّيْكَ اللَّهُمَّ لَبَّيْكَ لَبَّيْكَ لَا شَرِيكَ لَكَ لَبَّيْكَ إِلَّا شَرِيكًا هُوَ لَكْ تَمْلِكُهُ وَمَا مَلَكْ Except for a partner or an associate, that is also your belonging. You own him. تَمْلِكُهُ وَمَا مَلَكْ You own him, he does not own anything. And subhanallah, the, the, the kuffar of Mecca used to believe that even these idols, yani these beings that are represented by these idols, they are in ownership of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and they themselves don't own any things. They themselves don't own any things, uh, any, any, anything. But, uh, but the, these people who are, yani, uh, Allah Mustaan, who have deviated from the truth so much that uh, they, they attribute the absolute control to these aqtab and these uh, uh, these uh, abtal wallahu uh, al-musta'an uh, yani this is a sort of shirk that has never been yani uh, known before allah al-musta'an or very seldom has it been known ala kulli hal there is one question from can is it shirk to say the affairs of this world are co-controlled by the angels it depends on what you mean by that any by the affairs of this world are controlled by the angels yani if you mean that they are carried out uh, by the angels uh, after Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala appoints them and uh, entrusts them with some amal, then yes, many of the yani, affairs of this world yani, are carried out by the angels, so it wouldn't be shirk. But if, it, if you mean by that that uh, yani, they control it, or Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given them the absolute control to do as they will, then this will amount to shirk akbar. Wallahu a'lam. Wallahu a'lam. And remember, the, the fact that they say that Allah has given them this ability, this does not يعني, benefit them. Because they, they, they believe these beings, these abtal and qutub and all of these uh, mashayikh to have absolute control. Even though if it is given by Allah, this is from the khasais of Allah. These are from the things that are exclusive to Allah. You cannot believe anyone besides Allah to have exclusive control of uh, the universe. Likewise, if someone believes that fulan, has absolute ilm al ghaib Fulan uh, has absolute knowledge of the unseen. And if you ask him, this is shirk akbar, he'll say, no, no, no. 
I believe that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given him absolute knowledge of the unseen. It is still is shirk akbar. Because يعني, regardless of what you believe, how, it, uh, يعني, how he has been given it, it is still is from the things that are exclusive to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Absolute knowledge of the unseen is exclusive to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So regardless of whether you believe it has been given to him by Allah or he has independently known uh, the unseen uh, without the help of Allah, both of these amount to shirk akbar. Wallahu wal'iyadu billah. Wal'iyadu billah. Type. So these are the uh, يعني, things that invalidate Tawheed al rububiyyah To attribute some of the, one of these exclusive things to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, to attribute them to someone besides Allah. قال الشيخ حافظ الحكمي هو اعتقاد متصرف مع الله عز وجل. يعني it is to believe that, in a, that there is a disposer, there is a governor besides Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala or alongside Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala في أي شيء من تدبير الكون. In any one matter, يعني not all the matters, even if you have commit shirk in, in tadbir, you this will be shirk akbar. It, it is not necessary that you have to commit shirk in all the four or six uh, يعني, things that come under tawhid al rububiyyah even in one of those matters. And the shaykh gives examples. Min ijad in idam. Ijad means to bring something into existence, to, to bring something into wujud. It has been يعني, derived from the word wujud, ijad. To bring something into, into wujud. طيب, from, from wujud. And i'da means to cause something to become adam. That is, يعني, non-existent. طيب, to, to make it non-existent. Wa from hayat, and it refers to giving life. Or imata, which is taken from maut, which refers to causing death. Or jalbu khayrin, or to bring about. Jalb means to bring about. جَلْبُ خَيْرٍ أَوْ دَفْعُ شَرٍ دَفْعُ means to dispel or يعني, uh, k- k- uh, يعني remove something. Uh, دَفْعُ شَرٍ طيب أو غير ذلك من معاني الربوبية أو غير ذلك من معاني الربوبية or anything else from the matters of ربوبية which are exclusive to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala if, they, if any one of these matters is attributed to anyone besides Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala this is shirk akbar in rububiyyah. Wal'iyadu billah. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala save us from falling into such a uh, and misguidance. Time. Yaqulu Allah azza wa jal wa in yamsaska Allahu bidurrin fala kashifa lahu illahu wa in yuridka bi khayrin fala radda li fadlih. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, and this is an ayah which mentions, mentions jalb al khayr and daf'u shaq. That if Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala brings some harm to you, and who, who is being addressed with this ayah from Surah Yunus? Who is the one being addressed here? What does it mean by you? Yunus. La, la, it's Surah Yunus, but who is the one being addressed? It's Surah Yunus, uh, but. Muslim. Uh, Muslim. Who? Sorry again. Who does the who does the Quran address with singular? No, with singular uh, pronouns. Who does the Quran address with singular pronouns? Direct address. Insan. Insan. Yeah, Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam. This is this addresses to Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam. Iyam saska Allahu bi dhurrin. Iyam saska yani oh Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam. Wa iyam saska Allahu bi dhurrin. Fala kashi falahu illahu. That if this address is to Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam, then a forgery it is for us as well. And if this is true for Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam, then it is all the more true for other people other than Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam. If Allah subhanahu wa taala wants to bring any harm to Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam, then no one can remove it except Allah. Despite the elevated rank of Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam, if this is the case, then it is all the more true. Uh, in regards or with regards to us, it is all this. This is this is this is the meaning of the style. This is the meaning of the style in the Quran. When the Prophet ﷺ, many a times when he's addressed directly, it is to uh, yani indicate that if this is true for Muhammad ﷺ, then it is all the more true for you, O people. And this is the slub in 
يعني in Arabic they refer to it by saying إياك أعني فاسمعي يا جارة they call this, this is just يعني a side فائدة, side benefit يعني this is a very famous saying in Arabic or they, as they call it ضرب المثل إياك أعني فاسمعي يا جارة لحظة لحظة إياك أعني فاسمعي يا جارة طيب there it, I'm referring to you or oh my neighbor so you should listen to it يعني this is a story there's a story behind this uh, saying that this person was saying things uh, addressing someone else uh, but in reality he wanted to يعني address this uh, uh, female neighbor of his so he, the, at the end of his uh, speech, he said, "Iyaki ani, fasmai yajara." I'm actually, I, I mean to address you, uh, my neighbor. So uh, listen to me. So this is like, uh, yani this, this is the, uh, yani, uh, we use this verb uh, al or this proverb to refer to this uslub that is mentioned in the Quran. That many times the prophet is being addressed, while the intention is to, yani warn the followers of the Prophet ﷺ that if this is true for the Prophet ﷺ, then it is all the more true for you, O followers of Muhammad ﷺ. Okay, so وَإِنْ يَمْسَسْكَ اللَّهُ بِضُرٍ فَلَا كَاشِفَ لَهُ إِلَّا هُ There is no one who can remove it and وَإِنْ يُرِدِكَ بِخَيْرٍ And if he intends to bring good to you then there is no one who would who can turn his favor and his grace back. So it is all the matters that are, are in the hands of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. طيب, moving on. ما هو توحيد الإلهية طيب, why is it using the word إلى أولوهية? Is there a difference between إلهية and أولوهية? نعم يا اخوان is there a difference between الهيه and الوهيه نعم let me study it before no between الهيه no between الهيه and الوهيه انكر شاهد there is no difference اه no that is between الربوبيه i don't know والله i think it is i think it is same i don't it is same لا بس لا بس ما في اشكال اليها له this is the word اليها means to to worship someone Aliha, the past tense <coughs> form, and Ya'lahu is the present tense form. Aliha Ya'lahu. What are its verbal nouns or gerunds as they call it in English? Yeah, it has three different verbal nouns. It has Aliha Ya'lahu ilahatan wa ilahiyatan or uluhiyatan. Wallah. All of these three mean the same thing. Yani the act of worship. All of these three are verbal nouns for the same verb. Which means to abada ya'budu. Yani to worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Abada ya'budu. To worship. Type. So that, that is why you can use tawheed al-ilaha, tawheed al-ilahiyya, tawheed al-uluhiyya. All of it is correct, inshallah. Type. What is the definition of Tawheed al-Ilahiyya? We mentioned a very simple definition, so it is easy for the students to memorize. And then we mentioned the kalam of the Shaykh in the book. So the easy definition of Tawheed al-Ilahiyya or Uluhiyya, Ifradullahi bil-Ibadah. What is Ifradullahi bil-Ibadah? This is, يعني, uh, I copied the slide, so Allah knows that. Wrongly translated. Single out, single out to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. To single out Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in what? In, in ibadah. Or to, to, kind of ibadah. to single out Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in ibadah. Ifradullahi bil ibadah. Yani, to not worship anyone besides Allah. To only man, man worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Mumtaz jiddan. Yaqul al-shaykh al-hafiz or shaykh hafiz al-hakami. 
هو إفراد الله عز وجل بجميع أنواع العبادة الظاهرة والباطنة قولا وعملا It is to single out Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with all types of ibadah All types of ibadah Only for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala Whether they are ظاهرة يعني outward or باطنة or invert قولا whether they are statements or they are actions عملا and also there is another thing that is included in Tawheed al-Ibadah or Tawheed al-Ilahiyya or Tawheed al-Uluhiyya وَنَفْيُ الْعِبَادَةِ عَنْ كُلِّ مَا سِوَى اللَّهِ تَعَالَى كَائِنًا مَنْ كَانْ to negate ibadah يعني to negate the worthiness for ibadah that the, the, to negate that anyone is deserving ibadah except Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala no matter what or who it is. No one deserves to be worshipped, to be worshipped except Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That is the meaning of nafyu al-ibadah, yani kulli ma si wallahi ta'ala. And nafyu istihqaq al-ibadah. Like the Shaykh mentioned before once, wa nafyu istihqaq al-ibadah. If you could add here istihqaq, that will be clear inshallah. Wa nafyu, that no one else besides Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is Worthy of worship to negate the worthiness and the deservedness. طيب. كما قال تعالى لك الله سبحانه وتعالى وقضى ربك ألا تعبدوا إلا إياه. And your Lord has decreed that you should not worship anyone but Him. You should not worship anyone but Him. وعبد الله ولا تشرك به شيئا. Worship Allah سبحانه وتعالى and do not associate anything. With him, طيب. I have a question. Uh, this is regards to, to with regards to tafsir and يعني, side benefits, you can say. يعني فائدة جانبية. طيب. وقضى ربك. What is the difference between قضى and أمر? يعني which would which one is more uh, intense in its meaning? Is it more intense to say Allah has decreed, or is it more intense to say Allah has commanded, decreed, or is it more intense to say amara, which means yani Allah has commanded. Yani just to in my opinion, your opinion, Qada is the more intense. Mumtaz, that's that's akid, and that's that's how the. That is why we are mentioning this question. But the thing is, how? How is it yani, more intensive than Amara? Amara is something that is, is somebody is ordered to do it, and Khada is that after, after a, a lot of work behind it, then it is decided that this is to be done, and it is my decision. Mm -hmm. Uh, it is a decision of a panel. It has been made compulsory. طيب. But in case of Allah, there is no panel. He is alone. La bas. But this is, يعني, uh, this is not exactly Allah alam. Why this is more intensive, يعني, in this uh, particular case. طيب. See, Allah subhanahu wa taala sometimes when He is, يعني, when He commands us in the Quran, He uses the Yani he uses a uh, something that in, in English we call a nominal sentence. Yani jumla khabariya. And he he gives he's giving some information. It, it is not a command. It is not something that is imperative. It is it is just it's, it's a nominal sentence. It's a it's mentioning a khabar. It's a jumla khabariya. It's not a jumla talabiya. In that particular sentence, Allah is not asking to to be, something to be done. Rather, he's telling you something. Let me give you an example. Example of this is like uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in Surah Al-Baqarah, for example, the mutallaqats are What What is the sentence? There is no fi'l amr here. There is no command in this sentence, yani, uh, linguistically speaking, uh, or yani, grammatically speaking. It is a sentence that means, that literally translates as, 
those who are divorced, they wait uh, for three uh, menstrual cycles. This is just an information that they do this. This is how they do. The, those who are divorced, they wait for three menstrual cycles. طيب, is this a command? In reality, this is a command. But it has been mentioned as a nominal sentence, as a jumla khabariya, not as a jumla talabiya. Yani it's not, the, the jumla does not contain any, any talab. It does not contain any command. It only contains information. The ulama of balagha mentioned that this is more intense or more emphatic than using a command. Why? Because this, yani, portrays the matter as if this is how things are going to be done. There is no other way. There is no other option that there exists. There, there doesn't exist any disobedience of Allah. This is how things are done. This is how the divorcees uh, do. They wait for three menstrual cycles. So this is, they say, the ulama the, of Balagha say, this is more emphatic than saying uh, the divorcees should wait for three menstrual cycles. No. He says, this is how it is done. So there is no uh, imagining of someone going against the command of Allah. This is, everyone does this. Everyone is following this. And he, this is how it should be. So they say that this jumla khabariya or a, a, a sentence which actually, which grammatically is an informative nominal sentence, but it intends to command us, uh, uh, to command something. This is more emphatic in terms of, uh, in, 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 more emphatic than a sentence which has a, a, an explicit command. So, وَقَضَى رَبُّكَ اللَّهُ أَعْلَمْ يعني قضاء, Again, it's decreed. And this is how it is supposed to be. خلص, this, is, this is something that is uh, done and decided. خلص, so this is, what, this is how قضاء الله أعلم is more emphatic than أمرة in this particular place. Uh, do, do you understand this point? It's just a fact that يعني it's, it's just a side benefit. Even if you don't understand, it's fine. But is it clear to the students or most of them? Um, Inshallah, طيب جزاكم الله خير. توحيد الألوهية. Now we're done with this. طيب. ما هو ضد توحيد الإلهية؟ ضد توحيد الإلهية or the thing that invalidates توحيد الإلهية is shirk. And this is of two types. طيب. So there is, يعني we said that there is shirk in ربوبية, there is shirk in ألوهية, there is shirk in أسماء وصفات. But يعني so the one that invalidates توحيد الإلهية is shirk in إلهية. What is it? The, it is shirk أكبر. There is, there is, it's of two types. It is of two types. Shirk akbar It invalidates the Tawheed al uluhiya completely, fully. It negates it and invalidates and nullifies it fully and completely. This is Shirk Akbar, major Shirk. And then there is another type of Shirk which, is, which opposes Tawheed al uluhiya which does, uh, which is, يعني, uh, uh, or violates, violates Tawheed al-Uluhiyya, but it does not completely invalidate it. It does not completely nullify it. It partially nullifies it, or it, uh, or it represents a defect and a flaw in Tawheed al-Uluhiyya. This is shirk asghar. This is minor shirk. وَيُنَافِي كَمَالَهُ It invalidates the perfection of Tawheed. Yani, it represents a defect and a flaw in Tawheed al-Uluhiyyah. It, it, it partially violates it. It partially yani, invalidates it, not fully invalidates it. So that means that a person who commits shirk asghar is still a Muslim. As for the one who commits shirk akbar, he is not considered a... He's not considered a Muslim. طيب اليوم ما حد يساعدني لا بس طيب now what is major شرك what is شرك أكبر طيب شرك أكبر is هو صرف عبادة لغير الله تعالى that is it يعني yani just memorize this part to direct an act of worship to someone other than Allah سبحانه وتعالى to direct an act of worship 
for someone other than Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. I need to, to perform an act of worship for someone other than Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Okay, which act of worship? The ritual one or the non-ritual one? Yani smiling for someone other than the sake of Allah, yani? Is it going to be shirk akbar? No. No, then which one? The ritual or the non-ritual, Sheikh? Ritual. The ritual ibadah. The ibadah that is nusuk. That is the one, if it is directed to someone other than Allah, it amounts to shirk akbar. As for the actions that in their essence are not ibadahs, but they turn into ibadah because of the niyyah, like smiling to someone, helping someone hold something or pick, picking something up for him, or yani, removing something harmful from his way, etc. If this is done for other than Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and you don't have the niyyah to please Allah, and this does not amount to shirk akbar because this action in its essence was not an ibadah. It turned into an ibadah because of your niyyah. Okay, so this, this is here when we say sarfu ibadatin li ghayrillah, yani to direct a ritual ibadah, an ibadah that is nusuk to someone other than Allah, which is why in the examples we mentioned, min du'a'in, wa dhabhin, wa nadhrin, wa raja'in, wa tawakkulin, wa sujudi taqarrubin, wa tawafi taqarrubin, wa ghayriha. What are the examples? Du'a. Du'a, when you ask someone, and he besides, or someone asks someone besides Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, yani for a, yani like we mentioned before, for a metaphysical benefit or for yani an unseen benefit, non-physical benefit, then this is, this amounts to shirk, akbar. When you slaughter a, a, some animal for someone other than Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, seeking a benefit through unseen and non-physical means, this also amounts to shirk, akbar. When you make a vow, nether is wow. Yani wow is uh, when you say, like, for example, yani if uh, uh, yani someone goes to a grave, okay, and he says that if I pass in my exams, I'm going to yani give, uh, let's say, I'm going to distribute food uh, around your grave. So he is making a vow for this for this particular person that for this that person because he expects him to cause him to pass in the exams you get the point and neither is this any neither is like when you make a deal sort of a deal that if i get this i will do this so when this sort of thing is done for someone besides allah if someone he goes to a grave and he says if i pass in my exams or if i get a job i'm going to do this and this for any around your grave or I'm going to yani, put lamps uh, on your mazar for example on your tomb then this amounts to shirk akbar because nether to make a vow is an ibadah and it's only to be done for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala it is only to be done for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala so you can only make a vow for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala you can say oh Allah if you pass me if you make me pass in my exams I will yani, I will fast for three days I will yani, pray uh, eight rak'ahs, I will pay ten, ten rak'ahs, etc. This sort of a vow can only be made for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Even though that it's this, this action in and of itself is makruh. This action in and of itself is makruh. It is, it is not, it's dislike to do this. To say, oh Allah, if you pass me in my exams, I will fast for three days. Oh Allah, if you pass me in my exams, I will pray ten rak'ahs. This in and of itself is makruh. But if it is done, it is only should it only should be done for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And if it is done, then it is wajib and obligatory to fulfill it. Tayyib, wajib and obligatory to fulfill it. So they the ulama say that this is a very yani, uh, uh, strange uh, ibadah in the deen that it's before you start it or before you initiate it, it's makro. Once initiated, it becomes wajib. Yani, ajib, shay ajib. This is a very, uh, yani, uh, strange. Uh, I'm, I'm avoiding uh, questions right now because I just need to just uh, finish, uh, uh, yani, a couple of questions. We need to get to Shirk Asghar. It's very important and, yani, uh, I really want to get, get to it today. Okay, what tawakkul, tawakkul, what is tawakkul, ya shabab? We are ikhwan and khawat. If someone has questions, please, you can type. To, Sorry? To depend on Allah. 
reliance, to depend on Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, to rely upon Allah and to depend upon Him. Right? This is Amal uh, al or this is Amal al Jawarih. This is Amal al Qalb or Amal al Jawarih. Is this from the actions of the heart or the limbs? Qalb, Qalb. Amal al Qalb, Mumtaz, Mumtaz, Amal al Qalb, Amal al Qalb, Mumtaz. Everyone, mashallah, in the chats as well as in the yani, audio. Uh, mashallah, amal al qalb, tawakkul is amal al qalb. So if you depend on someone besides Allah, the way one should depend on Allah, and you attach all your hopes to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, that is, which is raja, raja is hope, and reliance is tawakkul, if you attach all your hopes to, uh, to other than Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and completely and fully depend on that particular person, or that particular being, then this amounts to shirk akbar. And this is in particular, and this is a side, as a side point, this is in particular noticeable in religions which are based, which are full of shirk, yani, like Hinduism. You would find some Hindus, yani, uh, if someone does them a favor, they would like attribute or they would they call him a god. They would say, you are my god. You are everything for me. Oh, I fully depend on you. Uh, so such religions which have yani, which are f full of shirk, they have this yani, uh, this shirk akbar. Mostly they have this shirk akbar in raja and tawakkul, and they don't mind or they don't find it yani, odd or s something evil to fully depend on someone besides uh, the god, or to fully yani, depend and uh, attach his hopes to someone besides uh, uh, besides God. So yani, this is yani, more found, uh, morally found in yani, Hindus and other mushriks. Yani. Even those who attribute themselves to Islam, who ascribe to Islam, like uh, some of the uh, ghulat, some of the, yani, those who have yani, yani, gone too far in shirk, like uh, some of the rawafid and some of the Sufis, they also have this. Yani, they, their, their hopes are attached with the people of these graves. Ya Abdul Qadir Jilani, Ya, yani, ya uh, there's another Ya Ghoth, Ya Fulan, Ya Kada. Yani, they have their hearts totally attached to these beings other than Allah, and they totally depend on these beings other than Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And this is yani, Allah Musta'an, yani, wickedness. Was sujood taqarrub, and a prostration done to draw closeness or draw closer to someone. Why did I say it's sujood taqarrub? Why not sujood? Yani without any uh, restriction, yani without any qaid. Why in particular sujood that is for taqarrub? Is there any other type of sujood as well that is done not for ibadah? Maybe out of respect? Ahsant, ahsant. Taib, yani, uh, maybe that is, done, that is done out of respect or uh, veneration, yani sujood al ta'zim or out of respect, like the sujood that was done by the parents of Yusuf alayhi salam to Yusuf alayhi salam. Yeah, that is a sujood out of respect. The sort of sujood which was allowed in the previous sharia, it is, yeah. yani, it is not considered ibadah. So the, the sujood that is done to draw closer to some being, this is the one that is considered ibadah. Likewise, I said tawaf taqarrubin. Tawaf, that is done for taqarrub to the, the particular being. Why? Yani if, uh, if someone does tawaf of a grave, and by doing that tawaf, he intends to please Allah, is this going to be shirk akbar or asghar? Akbar. Shirk Akbar. It's going to be it's going to be Shirk Akbar. No, no, astaghfirullah. It's going to be Shirk Asghar. Why? Sorry. Because the intention of this action was to please Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and to draw closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So if someone is doing tawaf around a grave for Allah, this is Shirk Asghar. Because it lead it can lead to Shirk Akbar. But this action in and of itself is not Shirk Akbar. It would be Shirk Akbar if he's doing the tawaf to draw closer to this particular being in the grave or someone besides Allah. If he's doing this action to draw closer to someone besides Allah, then, then, then it would amount to Shaykh Akbar and yani, wa ghayriha and other uh, uh, types of uh, ibadah. Right. This is Shaykh Akbar. To, yani, one of these, some of these ibadahs or one of the types of ibadah, if it is done for other than Allah, then this would be Shaykh Akbar. وَالْمَوْتُ عَلَيْهِ يُوْجِبُ الْخُلُودَ فِي النَّارِ To die upon shirk akbar, this causes one to burn in hellfire forever. Forever. If one dies upon shirk akbar, 
there is or upon kufr there is no way back there is no way to jannah wallahu almusta'an nasar allah al-afiyah salama yaqul allah azza wa jal inna allah la yaghfir an yushrak bih wa yaghfir ma duna dhalika liman yasha allah subhanahu wa ta'ala does not forgive that partners are associated with him wa yaghfir ma duna dhalika liman yasha anything besides kufr and shirk allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgives it for whom he wills yani this is something that allah has already stated khalas this yani has already decided shirk will not be forgiven shirk will not be forgiven so anyone who dies who dies upon shirk it is wajib upon us to believe that the asal is that he's going to jahannam this is from the from the dissociation from the bara remember wala in bara from the bara it is and from this is from the religion to believe that a person who dies upon kufr is going to hell fire is going to hell fire because that, that is how allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has decreed that is how allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has decreed yaqul allah azza wa jalla aidan innahu man yushrik billah faqad harrama allah alayhi aljannah wa ma'wahu an-nar the one who commits shirk with allah subhanahu wa ta'ala then allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has made jannah haram upon him he can never enter jannah wa ma'wahu an-nar in his house or home and his abode is the hellfire is the fire طيب and then the sheikh says wa yastawi fi al-khuruj bi hadha al-shirk yani al-din both yani al-mujahir bihi ka kuffar quraysh wa ghayrihim wa al-mubtin lahu ka al-munafiqin wa al-mukhadi'in yani those who commit this type of shirk both both go out of the fold of islam and this shirk takes out of the fold of islam both those who can openly commit it and those who conceal it and yani commit it in secret yani whether it's a munafiq or whether it's a it's a yani an open mushrik both are yani if they commit shirk uh, akbar they are out of the fold of islam uh, by this the sheikh means to say that the munafiq is not a muslim in reality he is treated like a muslim because we don't have any dalil for his kufr we don't have any clear dalil for his kufr that is why he is treated like a muslim but because he conceals the kufr yani in reality he is a kafir the munafiq the the the, the major yani hypocrisy the munafiq nifaq akbar such a person is in reality a kafir even though we would treat we are any yani, ob or any yani, compelled to treat him like a muslim because we don't have any dalil against them so so here the sheikh just wants to say that munafiqin are in reality kuffar which is why allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the quran inna al munafiqin fi ad-darq al-asfal min an-nar yani the, the the hypocrites are at the lowest level of yani of jahannam wa lan tajid lahum nasira you will never find those uh, anyone who would who would help them who would, who would help the munafiqin uh tayyib <coughs> shirk asghar allah musta'an shirk asghar is uh, allah musta'an <coughs> i think the time is almost up and shirk asghar is a, a difficult topic uh, is this ayah talking about shirk akbar the one in surah al-maida naam is talking about shirk akbar inna huma yushrik billah and yani whenever shirk is yani in generic mentioned in a very general context it refers to shirk akbar yani we must have some qarina uh, some side indication that 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 causes you to yani interpret shirk as shirk asghar طيب طيب what if he does not know just following his fathers before as there is in the quran as is mentioned in the quran and following the fathers will be no of no use many of the mushriks they say inma yani we used to just uh, uh yani follow our fathers طيب uh, uh what is it what is the ayah qalu inna kunna so many places in the quran i'm getting confused now so many places in the quran yani if you just open any surah in the quran any makki surah you'll find that yani the bushriks when they are given the punishment they say we used to yani worship we used to follow our fathers طيب so but that is of no use that is of no use wa qalu rabbana inna ata'na sadatana wa kubara'ana fa adalluna as-sabila in surah al-ahzab that oh allah we have obeyed our masters sadatana wa kubara'ana and the elder ones and the senior ones amongst us fa adalluna as-sabila so they are the ones who misguided us so even if he is being misguided by someone and he follows someone blindly into shirk akbar it's going to be of no benefit to him because these are the people in surah al-ahzab they are 
يعني in talking to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala from Jahannam. They're saying, رَبَّنَا آتِهِمْ ضِعْفَيْنِ مِنَ الْعَذَابِ وَالْعَنْهُمْ لَعَنْ كَبِيرًا Oh Allah, give them triple the azab and uh, curse them with a, يعني, a major and a big curse. يعني, لعنا, لعنا so it is not going to save them. This, this, uh, uh, excuse, this is not an excuse to, to, to follow the forefathers. And which leads us to يعني, reflect and contemplate that anything, if we have been taught which is wrong by our fathers or forefathers, we must recheck it. We must يعني, re-examine it in the light of Quran and Sunnah. It is fine that your father could be wrong. It is fine your forefather can be wrong. It is fine that your mother could be wrong. Absolutely fine. It's absolutely possible. So the, the dalil for us is the Quran and Sunnah and according to the fahm, the understanding of the Salaf. Yani many people, they find it very difficult to go against the forefathers. This has been the case since the beginning of yani, uh, mankind. So this is not a problem. The thing is that all that you do, it should be in accordance with Quran and Sunnah. Ala kulli hal, shirk asghar is a very important topic. This question alone is going to take a very long time because of these examples that we have mentioned of shirk asghar. Each example needs at least yani, two, three minutes of discussion. So inshallah, we'll do it in the next session, bi izni ta'ala. After inshallah, shirk asghar <coughs> and kufr and nifaq, we'll yani, speed up and finish the book quickly, bi izni ta'ala. Yani, because there will be lots of questions which are yani, not very relevant at this stage. Uh, of the of the talib ilm, yani this stage in which the talib ilm is for a beginner, it's not they're not very relevant. So inshallah we'll speed up a little. Next fi bi hada al yom will suffice with this inshallah. Wa sallallahu wa sallam ala nabiyyina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi ajma'in. Subhanakallahumma wa bihamdik nashhadu an la ilaha illa anta nastaghfiruka.